Hey guys, Dakara here and welcome back to my channel and today we're on season 1 episode 9 of Fringe so without further ado, let's roll that intro and get straight into it. Here we go. A rocky start, but I'll be letting the board know we're in good hands. Scoob, settle down. Just lie down. Yeah. Holy. And now you are Butterfly Man. Why? Why would you do that? That's a firm no from me. Yeet. Gonna sprout some wings or oh, splat. He's gonna splat. This is not the Marvel Universe. This is fringe science. Lauren and Craig will be here. Remember Craig? He's from South Africa. <laughs> yeah. Americans saying Craig always makes me laugh. Craig and Graham instead of Graham. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something and you're gonna think I'm joking, but I'm not. I quit. Runway 14. The plane will be waiting. So where are we going? <laughs> You're gonna think I'm joking, I'm not, I quit. Right, so it's uh, Platform 14. Massive Dynamic seems like such an innocent name for a corporation. We haven't heard from Massive Dynamic in a while though. It's a shame I don't have a lab, I'd like to examine him. You do have a lab, Walter, your lab. Yes, I do, don't I? See, he's smiling now, though, at Walter's little quirks. Oh, he's had a haircut and a shave. I'm going to go wherever this investigation takes me. I would expect nothing less. And I would expect more from you than the polite appearance of cooperation. Okay, Olivia. He wasn't planning on killing himself three days ago. He just booked a plane ticket. Uh like the butterfly. Did you find something? It was she, see? No. Uh oh. Seems my suspicions were correct. These wounds. Oh, sweet Jesus. Peter, do you know what I've been remembering? Aspects of your childhood. That's charming, Walter. Blood samples are ready. All you eat was coffee yogurt. Almost drove his mother to tears. Walter, that wasn't me. That was you. Oh. But he's right. About the yogurt. In case you haven't noticed, I can be quite obsessive. Really? <laughs> That's just like, you're telling me. I just didn't realize what it would do hearing your voice. Who is this? I know you're back. I need to see you. I can't get away right now. Well, then when? I feel like I'm, I'm going to know this actress because her voice sounds so familiar. The vintage operating system. Yes, then. Talk to Walter at least, Olivia. I mean, at least he knows what potentially could happen. Oh, is she going where we led her to last time? Yep. I'm surprised that's still still in there though. Oh, it says Manchester on it. Chester. Butterflies come flying out of this now. You better hide yourself. Uh. Just shut it like it never happened. Maybe I could just take a personal leave, just do nothing for a week or two. Do nothing, sure. Think that'll help? It would, but she ain't gonna do it. Dr. Bishop wants you back immediately. He thinks you've cracked the case. The guy who jumped out the window? Dr. Bishop thinks it's because of the frogs. The agent's got ladder there. 
do I know her? Hi. Oh, that was kind of awkward, but quite sweet. No, no, I don't know her. If I can find you, then they can find you. I know. They'll hurt you. Oh, he's in way deeper trouble than what I thought, isn't he? Oh, I am covered in cat hair, Scoob. Good job, I love you. Trust you. I'm not sure I ever even knew you. That's got a sting a bit, no? Look, it's coming. <laughs> Uh oh. Michael. Things have changed. Yeah, apparently. I convinced him that he was in a meat locker. I told him that this ice cube was a burning coal. No way. So, Walter, what does this have to do with frogs? A species which secretes a, a psychoactive compound. So, you're saying that Mark Young hallucinated being cut on his body and then his mind made it actually happen? very clever means of murder. I'm sure we have discussed this. No, no, you and I did before Olivia got here. Astrid's learning how to uh, clock his moods. I ran a property record search on the basement where he found the toads, but nothing came up. How'd you even find it in the first place? It's a long story. <laughs> One that she's not gonna get into just now. The shed where I found the frogs, John Scott led me to it. Just ignore the hair, guys. I mean, how long is this going to keep happening? Could last for many years. Oh, great. We may be able to bring the memories to the surface and purge them from your unconscious, but... But you'd have to put me back in the tank. Oh, in the tank. No thanks. I need to do it. Is Walter Bishop the voice of the Doctor on Futurama? Or do they just sound really familiar? Or similar, even? Okay, is this Michael? He is watching. Putting some gas in the car, why? What's up? I think you should just come back. Okay, no problem. See you soon, Astrid. Bye. Here we go again. Oh, Walter. Ooh, that looked painful. This is a technique I developed. Decades ago, in this very lab. Most of which I don't remember. Is Peter coming? Yes. I love how he mutters that bit. You must focus on my voice, or you may risk being lost in the memories. This seems silly. Oh. What? I just got an erection. <laughs> Fear not, it's nothing to do with your state of undress. You can simply need to urinate. That's good to know. Can you get it in the tank, please? I love how Ashton just calmly shakes her head like, oh, Walter. How do you not just burst into laughter at that? Surely you wait until he goes to urinate. Look for signs. Signs? I'll tell you when you get there. Tell you when you get there. If you ever get there. You're taking untested psychedelics. God. Among other things, I thought it appropriate to pray you don't get electrocuted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What are you doing, Olivia? I see nothing. Just light. Like heaven. Anything now? What do you see? Oh. Is that not her apartment? Walk through it. Tell me where you end up. This is where we had our first date. I'm getting up. What should I do? Uh, fear not. This is just a memory. They cannot see you. Oh, but she can now see what he did while she went away. That'd be so good. That'd be wild. You were lying to me about who you were. Did you ever have any feelings for me at all? The fact that everyone can hear everything that she's saying right now is extremely vulnerable. And I'm surprised she's being so open. I guess it's emotions taking over. Mark Young killed himself yesterday. No, Olivia, he definitely does not see you. It looks like he saw. All right, I'm good. Oh my God, it's Mark Young. I see him, he's here. So he knew, it. He, he did know him. We do this one deal, and it's hasta luego. Hasta luego. 
They've disappeared. Because it's John's memory. You're not in their memories, you're in John's. Come on, Olivia. <laughs> if we get into another Ashley situation, we're screwed. <gasps> There's no way he's going to kill him. No! Get me out of here! The way that Peter did not hesitate for a single second there and just opened them doors to get her out. Oh, I love him. That's it. That's the Latino guy I saw in John's memory. I mean, kind of. We believe Mark Young was murdered for selling technologies to black market buyers. What was the girl that he met up with called again? The drug can easily be mass produced as a cheap street drug, or worse. Her eyes are so pretty. We're gonna need massive dynamic to disclose every project that Mark Young was working on. You're right. Although that'll be easier said than done. I'll see what I can do. It's walk. A power walk. If you touch her again, I'll kill you. He's such a badass as well, isn't he? From Nina Sharp. Mark Young's project. So Nina Sharp just handed those over, and she definitely didn't withhold any of them. Hello. I'm calling on behalf of your long-distance carrier. I don't want you calling again, so take me off your list, okay? That's him, isn't it? Hasta luego. We do this one deal, and it's hasta luego. You clever bean, Olivia. I need this phone traced. This is our guy. He's in transit on Route 3, heading to the Lincoln Tunnel. Looks like he hit traffic. Where's the transponder? Let's go. Could look more like cops if they tried. That's him. Kneecap him. Or you could get mowed down. That is also an option. The whole thing is, it's a hoax. So Massive Dynamic can do whatever it wants to whoever it wants. Do you understand that? I think I'm beginning to. Is hell. And its founder? William Bell is the devil. Again, we haven't seen William Bell yet. Why do I get the privilege of your cooperation? Because I know I can trust you. You don't even know me. John Scott did. Yes. Immunity, complete protection, and I will tell you everything I know. Mm. Nina, Nina, Nina. What do you know? Uh, mm. The nurse works for Massive Dynamic and you're getting drugged, aren't you, mate? <laughs> See, I believe that your cooperation is an illusion. Are you sure you're feeling well, Miss Dunn? I think perhaps you're perceiving things that are entirely in your mind's eye. Nah, don't try and gaslight her. Are you protecting your CEO, William Bell? Does William Bell even exist? Once our witness talks, you lose all leverage in a plea. <laughs> this bit I don't get. <laughs> is the room gonna be empty? I won't say anything. How? How does that work? Our witness is the dead. What? what? Seems he was drugged with the same substance as Mark Young. Nina Sharp and Massive Dynamic have been nothing but cooperative with this investigation. Broyles, come on now. See, when it comes to Massive Dynamic, that's when I get nervous about Broyles. I just casually reading the Bible. Uh, I need to go back in. Absolutely not. Dangerous. I am prepared to take that risk. Clearly, but I don't know if Walter is. There is little makes me happier than taking drugs. Says he was such a straight face. You'll damage yourself. Every time you go back in, the risk of- He must care for her. Give me some time. I will try to develop a safer technique. What the hell happened to you? He's back in town. Peter Bishop. That was such a weird shape to, uh, like, bruise. Happening again. What's the clue gonna be? She did say, I saw you in the restaurant. I am confusion. I'm starting to think that John Scott is still being held in massive dy dynamic and he's being sort of used to get in the heads of 
others. Like with that guy's neck opening up and Olivia thinking that she's going crazy. Well, realistically, I've, I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know, guys. The story's getting a lot thicker now and meatier. I think the the way that they're pacing the show is very much like slow and steady wins the race. That's the vibe that I get. But because of the other stuff that's going on, it keeps the pace going. It keeps it the feel or the vibe like it's a much more... that The story arc is going way quicker than what we think it is uh I, I don't know it's it's a strange one because even though the i want to call the monster of the weeks but you know the procedural part of the show it always links back to the main story and i think that's what makes it different from others that you watch when it comes to those standalone episodes because yes they might give you little bits here and there but i feel like this show gives you way more than that it's just if you're open to seeing them and reading them that way. And a lot of the time I feel like I'm slow on the on the realisation of how it's all going to come together. And then at, right at the end, they always leave it on a cliffhanger anyway, which makes you want to watch the next one. So a fair play writers for doing what you're doing. You're absolutely smashing it. I think the Walter character is obviously i loved him from the beginning but he's becoming a much more likable approachable character i think now because it's he's just not as scary as he was at the very beginning in my opinion and now he's showing those uh vulnerable sides and more soft side to him the way he was talking to olivia and refusing to do as she asked and just throw her back in that tank because he does love experiments he's made that clear like that's what gives him joy but he wasn't willing to do that at the risk of losing olivia which i think was quite telling of him as a as a character because so far we really haven't seen him show any <laughs> any remorse uh when it comes to possible damage that he's doing to others uh, to, to humans, I should say. There's a possibility that Walter has sensed how connected Peter is to Olivia as well. I can't remember the girl's name now that um, Peter met up with in this one. But I do think that's going to be a very big part of Peter's story. So Michael was the guy that was or it appeared like he was abusing someone that Peter really cared about. Just at the sight of a bruise, he he's just flipped that switch and he's just wanted to threaten Michael straight away and lay down the law, like, you touch her again, I, I, I will kill you. And she's clearly very scared by him and worried for Peter. So whoever these guys are or who they work for, I think Peter needs to be careful. What would be nice though is if he confided in Olivia, told her potentially that he's in a lot of trouble and seeing how she reacts to that information. Because for me, it seemed more so one-sided when it comes to the relationship between Peter and Olivia. I'm not saying she doesn't like him, she definitely does. She sees the good in him. Uh, whereas I think Peter looks at her and just sees the world. <laughs> like the heart eyes are very strong from Peter to Olivia. But for Olivia to Peter, it's, it's not quite there yet. So if he's in trouble, I do think it would be really interesting to explore that when it comes to Olivia as well. And Walter for that matter. I do think Walter would do anything for Peter, but I don't know if Peter would be willing to allow Walter to help out in any way. Peter seems very protective of those that he's close to. And over these few episodes, because I have only watched eight episodes, so I don't know the characters well yet, guys. I'm just going off what I've seen. And he does seem to be extremely protective of those that 
he cares for. Olivia, uh, Walter, even Astrid, and now this, this new girl as well that's been introduced. So maybe Peter just travels about a lot because he obviously is wrapped up in the wrong stuff. But besides that as well, on the more emotional sense, I think he likes to flit around so that he doesn't feel uh, contained or claustrophobic any, in any way. And it's as if he doesn't want to get close to people from fear of losing them. Again, it could be way off base there, but it's surprising that I, I sort of think that considering he attaches himself to people quite quickly as well. But I think that's actually because he can read people quite well. He seems to pick up on social cues quite quickly. So if he sees the good in someone, he can trust his, his belief in that. And again, on the other side, it's when he sees the bad, he's like, yeah, I'm keeping you at arm's length and I'm going to protect those around me. So he doesn't have a bunch of friends, but the ones that he does have, he likes to hold on to and protect in any way that he can. Uh, I'm wondering if he's left this other girl uh, in the hopes that he would be protecting her by leaving. And maybe he feels as though him returning has then put her life in danger again. So he feels some responsibility there. Again, could be talking out of my behind. Let's just go with it, guys. And please, even if I'm really far off or if I'm nailing it, try not to give spoilers in the comments. I know it's really difficult, uh, but again, I think that my gut is telling me that the twists in this show are going to be huge. So I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to just enjoy the ride as naively and uh, raw as I as I can, really. I do like the thought of this tank, the sciencey bit. I think that the the, the consciousness of uh, two people sort of crossing, I find really interesting. I think where I get lost is what they're capable of doing once having that connection. So for Olivia and Scott, uh, it was, they were, they were melding through the tank, that bit I get. And I also followed the bit where it was John's visions of those memories. So the bit that I get lost at is because we don't have John. And I think if we, if I knew where John was, or even if it ends up being just John's brain in a jar or something, something weird like that, uh, then I could potentially wrap my head around it but because i don't know that side as far as i know he's just in the ground they buried him they went to his funeral and he is buried and again that that's all i know whereas if they replaced john's body for someone else's if the brain in the jar thing's not an option then when say the latino guy saw him and his throat opened up the nurse that walked into the room saw just his throat open. No one was there. That's where I get lost. I'm trying to think even from a fringe science point of view. How? How does that possibly happen? I know that during that flashback video that they had, that he said, oh, I'm, I've got like an ice cube. No, it was an ice cube. And he said it was a hot coal and then his skin started burning. So they were suggesting that it was like the mind over matter thing. So in his mind, it was happening and therefore his mind told his body to react that way. But to go from a burn to your neck just opening up, <laughs> very different things. Cause at least with uh, Walter Bishop's old video, he had an ice cube touching him. There was a physical object there. There was no knife to his neck or paper or anything. A finger going like this. There was nothing there. That's when I get lost. Unless they're going to mess with 
like the supernatural realm. So to suggest that John Scott is a ghost of some kind, but then that seems a bit silly. So only silly within this world, sorry, not silly in general, but yeah, I don't, I'm unsure. I still don't trust Nina at all. I think she's hiding a hell of a lot. Uh, but I do also think that Broyles knows more about it than he's letting on. It's as if he's forced to keep Nina safe. So that he gets some sort of info from her. And she's got some protection from Broyles because of that. I just hope that he doesn't genuinely trust her and then he's going to end up getting screwed over. Just like this other guy, this uh, dirty cop, and I don't mean John Scott, I mean the other guy, uh, that wife is in on it as well, I'm trying to figure this teleportation device out. Broyles, as far as I'm aware, didn't know about him being a dodgy cop, and, and they don't know either. I think that's another thing is they sort of pace it right because realistically it would take time it's not just gonna all come to a head and that they're just gonna fix everything instantly like you discover stuff at a much slower pace than what you can typically find in tv shows in the fictional world so yeah i mean i'm enjoying discovering as and when we go because even in these single episodes Again, that they link back to the main story arc, which is, yeah, one of my favourite things. Like, you have that main story, and then other, other stuff plays a part after that. I also want to point out that I liked that Olivia opened up to, is it Charlie? Um, about her visualising Scott again, and his reaction to that was like, you know, I, I get it. I understand. I'm with you. Obviously questioning it because, I mean, you should always question, but not being judgmental. And I'm hoping that that's going to uh, warm her up and allow her to trust uh, someone a little bit more as well. Because like I say, she is very guarded. And I, I worry that that is what's going to send her crazy more so than even seeing these emails and stuff. It's trapping all that knowledge and feelings within herself. And when she feels as though someone's taking her for granted or pushing a little bit too far, she's always says it in a, a quite a blunt way, but also wrapped in <laughs> wrapped in sarcasm as well. Like the conversation she had with Broyles, like, oh no, I, I can't do that. And you're going to think I'm joking, but I'm not. I, I quit. <laughs> And then he's like, just get your ass down it. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I'm enjoying seeing more sides to Olivia. Because she is uh, still a mystery to me at this point in time. I uh, love seeing a little bit more of Astrid as well. And how she uh, deals with Walter and his quirks and how Peter is starting to smile a bit more at the way that Walter is and just accept him. I do think he's getting comfortable now, which kind of worries me because when things start going well, something bad usually happens. But I've rambled so much through this. Yeah, this is like an hour 10 at the minute. So I better leave it there. If you can't tell, loving this show guys can't wait to watch the next one and i hope you're enjoying the reactions as well if you are give this video a cheeky thumbs up if not for me do it for scuba who made an appearance today and left left his mark everywhere so i'm gonna have to tidy this place up straight after filming as well oh um, yeah i digress i want to thank you all for watching subscribe if you can be so kind but as always there's no pressure here i would just love to have you a massive shout out to all of my members and a special one to my sponsors in the Mark of Jane tier, guys. You're amazing. So lucky to have you. And I cannot thank you enough for all of the support. All of these are in their extended form over on Patreon. So if you'd like to join the DAC pack, I would love to have you. But again, 
totally up to you there's no pressure and i hope to see you all again soon for another video thank you so much goodbye for now and before i completely sign off let's quickly take a comment from that dat pack and today i've chosen is it darla i want to say darla but I could be butchering your name and I apologize. So let me know and I'll make sure I correct it for the next time. And they say, you think you saw the observer? You may very well think that, but of course I couldn't possibly comment. Just got up and I'm loving your reactions. This truly wonderful show, a great cast, amazing characters, and some shockingly intriguing stories. What's not to love? Preach it. Oh my days. This is a very quickly becoming one of my favorite shows and again it's so early days so it, i feel as though I, i'm trying to stop myself from gushing over the show so much just in case you know my feelings change but i'm just really enjoying it guys so i just truly hope that you guys are enjoying it as much as me and uh seeing it again through someone else's eyes hopefully will be just as enjoyable uh that's the hope anyway <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for leaving your comment and don't forget guys if you would like to see one of your comments at the end of these videos don't forget to leave them in that comment section below and maybe yours will be next but until next time goodbye for now